it's Jen from Fabulous Paper Emporium. I have got the third tutorial, third part of how to make an album base. And like I've said before, this is something that can be translated into different size albums. The one that we're doing today or the one that we're, we have been doing is a six by six with a three and a half inch spine to accommodate six signatures. So I will do another part if um, for a four page signature album. But since we're doing six, I am just completing this one and then I will have to come back at a later date to do the one with the four. So for today, for now, I should say, because I've recorded them back to back. So for this particular one, the signatures are the pages. And we are going to create one sample of the page that I have done for the album that I call The Joelle. And so I'm going to continue on and we're going to do one sample because all of the signatures are exactly the same, front and back. And that was the way I designed it because it is basically a baby album. And so I'll just show you really quickly what the signatures are for this album. So when you open it, the this would be this a signature. So front and back, we've got a lot going on here. I'm not worried about the side pockets for right now because that is for another tutorial, which will be much later on. So the signatures for this page, or for this album rather, incorporate a panel that has a beautiful designer paper. This is from Echo Park's uh, Welcome Baby Boy. Absolutely love it. Comes in a Welcome Baby Baby Girl as well. Haven't used that one yet. In fact, I should have used that one for this tutorial, but uh, that's okay. I'm sure I'll have somebody I know will have a baby girl at some point. So, <laughs> so this gives a lot of space for photo, for journaling. There's a lot of space for other journaling as well. So probably for photos there. And then this, we have a gatefold behind that flips out. So as you can see, there's a lot of room. So what we will be doing today is we are going to be creating the base for this page because so far we just have the cover with our um, hinge inside. So now we need to be able to create the pages. So we're going to be creating the pages for this. We are going to be creating the gatefold. We're going to be creating the pocket. And so that will be, I'm sure, enough <laughs> to get you started on this project. Okay, so I'm going to flip that back in there and set that aside. So in order to get this done, uh, we're going to start with our signature pieces first. I've continued using the light blue and we'll be using some of the dark blue like you saw on the finished album. And the reason for that is the light blue I was able to find in 110 pound. It's not absolutely necessary. I know many people who have made it with 65 pound and it has been totally fine. That is just a personal preference. 80 pound I'm sure would work too. This is 110 and this is what I'm going to be using today. So we start off with two pieces, both um, not, they're not cut both at the same, so I won't erase that. So my first piece is going to be cut six by six. And my second piece is seven by six. And we're going to be scoring this on either end at a half inch. So let me grab my scoreboard. If you happen to be, look, I really love this scoreboard. Um, I've been using it now for several months and as far as scoreboards go, this is probably my favorite and I think you've seen it used on a number of different of my tutorials and it's just, it's my go-to. I love the one that is the larger. So this one holds a 12 by 12. There is a smaller one that is a score buddy um, and I don't remember what the size is, but it's, it's quite a bit smaller, uh, but great for traveling. And I use that one too when I'm making cards because it's easy to kind of, 
you know, bring to a warmer part of the house. <laughs> so for here, I've scored at six and a half, and then I'm going to score at a half. And you can always, you know, score at six and a half, flip it around, score at six and a half. Just so long as your score marks are on opposite sides of the page, that's all that matters because we've got our seven inches all the way across the top. So six and a half and a half. So that is all the scoring I'm going to be doing right this minute. We are going to fold in the score lines or fold over the score lines, grab my bone folder and really press that down. You want nice, crisp fold lines, making sure that everything kind of lines up. So since that's a half inch and I have not grabbed three quarter inch, or sorry, not three quarter, it's a half inch and I really should have grabbed, um, bear with me one second. I just gotta grab three eighths inch I knew there was a size I was missing. Three eighths inch double-sided tape for this one. So I know, okay. So I knew there was a, a measurement that I was missing. Three eighths inch score tape works amazingly well for this. Just like in the uh, base part of the album that we were creating, I wanted to use a score tape that was just under the uh the size of the panel that we had created with the score marks and it just works out that there's not a lot of gap i wouldn't use quarter inch because you really want this to be very very secure you can also use like i've always said a combination of double-sided tape with your liquid glue that works totally fine and well and i do it often Okay, so with these two score marks, so now we have a page that looks like this. Our score marks are folded, burnished. Our double-sided tape is on the top on the top side. And I'm going to start off by peeling this backwards a little bit, like I've shown you before, and we're going to grab our six by six piece. And this is what I do. This is my preference, but you may have to kind of figure out what works for you. Is I kind of tap it and make sure that everything is aligned at the top, okay? And this way, I've only got a little bit of my score tape exposed, which means that if I'm not happy with it, all I have to do is undo that little bit. But I'm really happy where that lays and that where that sits. So I'm really, I'm, I'm thrilled with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that a little bit. Again, just take your time with this. So now we have one side that is done. We're going to move over to the other side and absolutely, and repeat the exact same step. So I'm going to peel this back a little bit, fold that over. There isn't going to be a whole lot of wiggle, wiggle room on this side because this, your right side is already adhered nicely, but I'm just going to go ahead, fold that over, and then we're going to pull that down and adhere it. And there you have it, a, a signature already done. <clears throat> so you may be wondering, well, how does this go on? <laughs> so... We'll get to that and that will be then one of the parts of the tutorial is that these signatures actually slip on to the hinges that we've made. So that is how you're going to create your, your page and it becomes a pocket page. So we can, we can put in our little, um, the extra little bits on, on the side and it creates just that extra there's extra room now for photos, for journaling. The one that I've created with the, with for specifically for um, a baby is going to have a whole lot of room for extra, you know, journaling for, you know, momentous things that have happened that month, excuse me, that month. 
So now that our signature, excuse me, now that our signature is done, I've got the hiccups. Sorry, bear with me just one second. The two pieces, you're going to need two pieces of whatever color you're going with. And these are going to be six and three eighths by six. You can, again, need two pieces. So for each page, you're going to need two of those pieces, meaning you're going to need 24 in total. So with these pieces, we're going to actually score them. So I'm going to grab my scoreboard. And we are scoring these at two in. Well, let's not move. Stay. <laughs> we're scoring this at two inches and at three and a half inches. And then I'm going to come back and do the exact same thing with my second sheet. And sorry, we've got the six and three eighths at the top for both of the scoring. Before I forget that and get too far ahead of myself. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. And all we need to do is just fold on the score lines. So we're going to fold our half inch little tab burnish that and then fold again for our extra flap. So this flap should actually fit in there without any issues, should be able to fold everything over. And I, that's the reason for why the second panel is actually going to be smaller than the first one is so we have a little bit of a gap there. There's not going to be any issues with closing. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with my second piece. Just fold on the score lines. And then we can get on to our pockets. Perfect. So gate fold, done. Now our pockets. We have two options for you. One is slightly easier in the sense that you don't need to have a die cut machine. You don't need to have an edge die. It can just be something that you'd use your paper trimmer and your scoreboard and you're done. Then I've got the second option was way more involved. There is way more paper needed. So it's just something you're going to have to make a decision on yourself and go with whichever option you feel is best. So option number one, which is the easier of the two, you're going to need a base of four by four. We're going to be scoring this on all four sides. And then your designer paper is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And I'm not using designer paper because, well, this is a, just a tutorial on how to build and not necessarily to decorate. And I didn't have any like spare pieces. I know that's hard to believe. <laughs> I didn't have any spare pieces that I could just get my hands on really quickly. So, and I don't want to use any of the baby boy pa paper because, um, I am secretly making some other projects with what I have left over. And so that way I can use, a, I've used two complete, well, not two complete. I've used two six by six mega pads for what I've, what I've done. So just so you're aware, um, it is a beast when it comes to the paper, but there are ways to conserve the designer paper. And that would be using solids that coordinate with your paper. And that will go, that will make your paper go that much further. So this four by four, we have scored on all four sides at a half inch. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside for right now. We'll come back to that later when we're doing our second option. And so for this one, what we are going to do is now get out our paper trimmer. And we're going to cut this on the diagonal. So I've got something in my eye. Ow. I think it's like an eyelash folded in the wrong way. Okay, so if you're um, not familiar with uh, cutting on the diagonal, you are going to put each point, you're going to line those up with where the channel, where your blade um, moves along. And we are going to close that, making sure that our blade is in the middle somewhere of our piece. And this way we're not damaging either point. 
even though neither one of them are going to be seen really because that's going to be trimmed off it's still something that is a best practice let's say <laughs> so you're only going to cut on the diagonal once and now we're going to have a little bit of trimming to do so scissors so we're going to grab our scissors and right where all uh where the um blade has obviously cut through that sc the score line intersection we're just going to trim that off and miter at the same time we're going to flip this over and do the exact same thing on this side it right now it doesn't really matter the angle that we're doing it at it's just that we're mitering it so you have your box down at the corner that you can cut out if you so desire you can cut out on the score lines however you will have to still come back in and miter so one of the easier ways to do that would be to just cut on if I'm cut so here's my score line I'm just going to cut to the left of that to where all of the score lines meet to that point and then I'm going to cut on this side to the right of the score mark. And that way you have a little bit extra on both sides. So you've done your mitering as well as cutting out that bulk. Very possible that you're going to have to give it a quick little trim afterwards. I'm going to go back to this piece, <laughs> a quick little trim afterwards. And that's because when we go to fold these in, there might be a little bit of excess. So you see here on the corner, it comes to a really sharp point and, it, and it, it almost looks like it continues on for a little bit. So let's bring this out for just a second. I'm going to see. Yeah. So if I point, pull that out, I'm just, I'm folded one side still and I'm going to just slightly, I'm just trying to get the best vantage point. So I'm just going to trim that off just ever so slightly and that way when both pieces fold over one another it comes to a nice a little bit more of a smoother point it's not so dreadfully pointy that it's going to grab onto something and possibly rip so we how i've done this okay let me you get my bone folder so i can get that perfectly down I don't know why it's kind of flipping up, but anyways, so I just happen to have mitered these, these edges enough that I don't see it from the front side. You don't want to see them from the front side this way, no matter how you're laying it in your, in your book, in your album, you're still going to be fine. It's, it's going to be fine. 100%. I've got some little fluff fluffies there. I'm going to cut off. Okay. So you're going to do that to, to, um, 12 you'll need 12 of the four by four squares because you'll get you'll end up with two i'm going to complete this one as well because i'm going to use it for my sample oh i don't think i cut that one enough but let's see let's see oh well, that one was perfect that one i can tell is not it's not so perfect so again this is a little bit more exaggerated but you see how that's not really a nice point because I didn't really miter that quite as well as I should have. So I'm going to come back in, whoops, might give that another little miter or another little cut. And then I end up with a better, um, point. And here I obviously need to cut off some extra so you can flip it over and give it a, a quick trim that way. Or if you wanted to open it up and then just trim from there, that is totally fine. So we've got our two lovely triangles. And then we're going to do the exact same thing while I move that out of the way, bring out our paper trimmer. I should have cut this at the same time is we're going to do the same thing that we did with our larger square. We're putting our three and three quarters by three and three quarters in our trimmer exactly the same. We're going to sink our blade and that way we've got two beautifully cut triangles that can now go onto our uh, the tops and it leaves a really nice border all the way around. So I'm going to get rid of my pencil marks just because 
just had to make sure because the purple was just so close in terms of size. So you're just going to take your liquid glue, put that over there and adhere it. Just put a little bit of glue around the outside and layer it. Try to get the same kind of border that's going all the way around. Alrighty, so that one's done. And then we're going to do this one too. I'm going to get rid of that just in case I end up using these for a project. I don't throw away much. I mean, there's, I've got bins of scraps <laughs> that I am getting to slowly but surely. Scrap cards are, are one of, oh, I should have folded these in properly because it gives me a better, yeah. That wasn't working out very well and the glue was starting to set. So I'm going to arrange my point, my corner, see about getting that all lined up properly. Okay. So now we have our two pockets that are going to sit inside. And then with that bigger panel, it's going to keep the gatefold nice and closed. So they're not flapping around all over the place. So now we take, we bring in our, um, signature. So the signature, again, I've marked left on one side, right on the other. And we have our pocket, our holes are on both sides. Holes always have to stay on the left and the right. And that's why if you can, I would strongly recommend just marking them because there's nothing worse than having it in this orientation, doing a beautiful job placing all of your elements, all of your interactive pieces, and figuring out that you have done it in the wrong orientation. So sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So with your two pieces now, I'm just going to dry fit them really quickly. So obviously with the tab on the outside, I'm just going to fold that and put that in there. My flap is on the other side. So they come to me, you're going to have some maybe that are, that aren't needing quite as well. What I would do is focus on one side. So this, for this particular item or for this particular page, I'm going to install it. This is going to be closest to the spine. So that just keep that in mind because if there's a little bit of extra overhang, like let's say about something like that, you know, it's not going to be noticeable if it's on the inside of the page as opposed to the outside. So just something to keep in mind. So because this is an interactive item, I'm going to grab my double-sided tape, my three eighths inch double-sided tape. I'm going to run that along there. I've got my handy dandy cutter thingy. <laughs> I'm going to have a name for it. And we're going to run the same thing on this side. And we're basically going to do the same. Oh my goodness. That was not me. I promised that was the dog. <laughs> it was back in the craft room. Uh, my space. Um, we're going to do something very similar to what we were doing when we were creating our signature pages. So I'm just going to take a bit of the score tape. I'm going to fold it backwards. And this way I can really line up my page or my panel, my, my gatefold panel to the end of the, uh, to the end of the, uh, signature page. So now that I have this little tab and I like where everything is, it's still lined up. I'm going to pull it a bit and just adhere it. Keep pulling a bit and go along pull and press. And there we go. So we've got one side down and now we're going to repeat this with the other side. When you're doing gatefold, I can't like stress this enough. I try and dry fit as much as possible because for me, it's like one of those things that it, it rarely is a hundred percent perfect. Sometimes there'll be a little bit of a gap, but I like the fact that there is a panel that goes on top so even if it's not a hundred percent, it'll still look amazing. 
Okay, so we've got our gatefold in looking absolutely beautiful. And the next thing we need to do is put in our pockets. So our pockets are going to be lined up right on the corner. That's very important. If you happen to have any overhang to um, like if it if it overhangs a little bit past where the gatefold meets, then just trim it off. It's it, it'll be it'll look totally fine. Just give it a little snip and you're away you go. So as soon as I'm done putting the, these panels in, I will show you exactly how to do the, um, the second option. So I'm just going to use some uh, of the liquid glue. You can absolutely use your double-sided tape 100%. I'm going to put a little bit of extra there. Try not to gob it on too, too much because you don't want it, you don't want it to um, really kind of extend past the, like, and go into the pocket. Okay. And then the next side, do the exact same thing. So there's two ways of, I guess, two ways, um, not two ways necessarily, but two options in terms of when you're putting your pockets in. And the reason why I say that is when I was making my album, I put in the pockets after I put in the designer paper. One thing to note is that if you do that, whoops, Okay, I didn't press that down hard enough, obviously. Um, but if you're gonna do that and put your designer paper on first, then put your, your pockets on, your two pockets, you do run the risk of having a little bit of um, little issue with this sliding in quite nice, quite as nicely as it should. And the reason being is there is a piece that I can get caught, right? This bottom, the, the bottom tab for both pockets, there's no smooth transition. So it can get stuck. Now, once you start filling your, your, um, album with designer papers and things, I found that I was no longer having that issue. Mind you, I have taken them in and out a million times probably over the last little bit. So just something to keep in mind. I feel that if we install our pockets first and then put in, let's say our designer paper, I'm looking for a piece that I can actually kind of just put in. So if we put in our designer paper, right? Because the designer paper that we put in is going to, isn't going to go right to the edge. There's going to be a nice little border around our designer paper. So once you have that, now you have a smooth, a completely smooth transition that putting this piece in, you're never going to get that caught on the bottom lip. So just something to keep in mind. So I definitely, if I were to make that out this album again, I would definitely go this way for sure. But for some reason, the glue really isn't, I should have put maybe a little bit more glue on the outside. Anyhow, this is just um, a bit of a uh, sample, if you will. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside for a quick minute, and I'm going to show you how to do option B if you happen to have a um, an edge die. This is the one that I used, if I can only pick it up. So this is the one that I used for mine and it was part of a, I think a Stampin' Up, um, a Stamping Up bundle I have for something. I think it might've been like a cake, have your cake or something like that. Anyhow, so that is what we're gonna be using for the second one. So what we're gonna start with is we're taking our three and a half by three and a half and we're scoring it on two sides this time. So if I score it on this side, I'm just going to turn it 90 degrees and I'm scoring it again. So 
this two lines that we've scored or the sides that we've scored have to connect in this way, not on opposite sides on the connecting sides. So once that is done, I'm going to set this aside and you're wanting to make sure. So these are the edges that I've scored. You're wanting to make sure that your designer paper is nice. You're, you're kind of focusing on where that score line is and the space between the designer paper and your base, just to make sure that you have a nice frame. I'm going to take some, I've got some of this, um, post-it note stuff. I'm wanting to keep that in place. That's the post-it note stuff. I, I've seen people use it and I was so intrigued because I usually use washi tape and washi tape uh, I've had varying degrees of success, but I really have, find like I have to take a lot of the tackiness away before I apply it onto my projects because there were a lot of times where I almost ripped it. So then that's no good. So now that I've tacked this in place, I've got my two score lines down here at the bottom. I want the top part, the, the rounded edges to be at the top. So I'm just going to lay this across, doing my best to get it as, as close to perfect as possible, if there's such a thing. There is going to be the possibility of having to trim it afterwards, which is totally fine. But depending on, on what your edge looks like, you definitely need it to run from side to side. So my your edge has to be four and a half, a good four and a half inches in length. You could, if you happen to have a dot, like a big square that would extend past, it doesn't, you don't have to worry about these two little flaps because we're going to miter those afterwards, but you're going to want to extend it past here. So you could always have your square die this way and cut it, you know, have a fancy edge that on, on that side. So just another thought, because I happen to find, as I was always looking through my dies the other day, I noticed that I had some rather large squares that I could have probably used instead, but oh well, now I know for next time. <laughs> so I'm just getting out my die cut machine and I'm going to sandwich this in and then we are good to go. So feed this through. Pop goes weasel. <laughs> I may have to edit that out. <laughs> that was silly. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to set this aside. And this piece has already kind of popped out because it wasn't adhered to anything. I'm going to gingerly take that off. And I will explain and show exactly why we push this all the way to the top. And that is extremely important to remember because you're a, you're cutting two pieces at once, which is going to lessen your, the amount of time that you're spending. But it also, when you go to lay it, you're going to have that perfect border around your die cut piece as well as around the sides. So let me grab my glue and I can show you. Sorry, this. I kind of just grabbed something out of my stash and I don't know if it was the best. Well, color doesn't really matter, but I don't know if it was the best paper to grab because it seems pretty, pretty warpy. Okay. So I'm doing my best to kind of line that up. Again, it would be better if I had it folded. So we can push that in, but when these parts are folded, I'm just going to do a quick, forgot we didn't miter our corners. So the corners have to be mitered the exact same way for this one as we did for the other one. We're going to cut that. We're going to cut this. I'm probably going to have to trim it a little bit more off that way. But you get the idea here is that you've got your nice little border wrapping all the way around. So if you have little bits 
like on this one, I have a little tiny sliver right there that I can just cut off a little bit with my scissors. And here I've got another little bit that's kind of like hanging out there. I'm just going to cut that off and trim that off. And so that's how you would do it with your, with a fancy edge die. Um, if you're doing it with the edge dies, you're going to need 24 pieces because unlike when we trim it with our trimmer, we get two pieces that are totally usable. This part, because it's the opposite, I, there's nothing wrong. You could totally use it, but this piece and this piece don't exactly, you know, they don't really line up the way they should. So you're going to have to do that 24 times so that the pockets all align. And then for the last piece, the finishing piece, which is your panel that will slide in here. <laughs> and again, see, sometimes those tabs are a little bit more tricky in the sense that they get, they get, this panel gets hung up on them a little bit. So um, once you have your designer paper in there, none of that will happen, but you have this pushed all the way down and your gatefold, once it's all got designer paper on it, your gatefold is kind of hidden in behind. So regardless, like I was saying, regardless of whether or not your gatefold matches perfectly, you don't have to worry about it. Once the, once you pull this part, this panel out, it's not, somebody is not going to be all that you know, concerned about it. So that is ultimately what your signatures will look like. And that is it for this part of the tutorial. Um, the last part that I will probably do is to get the, is to do the pockets, the, the, the side pockets, the pocket panels. I can't remember what they're called. So for the pocket panels, I was show, telling you before that these pocket panels have one side for a lot of journaling, a lot of note taking in terms of, you know, in that first month, the growth, the changes, the all those fun things to make notes of. And this is just repeated throughout the album so that every month there is a different, um, a different page to write on. And that goes all the way through to 12 months or a year, <laughs> obviously. And, um, the simple things that I have, that I've done with this. So, in this pack, there are some little cut aparts, little tags, and they'll be from one month to 12, obviously. And so I put a little, a little, uh, tag on every single page. And then when you open it on the base, I put the, there are also little square boxes. And again, it goes from one month to a year. And there's, of course, some other cute little cut aparts. So what I did for this one is I didn't glue it all the way down. I put a little um, cut apart in there so the person who receives it understands and knows that this isn't glued down all the way. So if you wanted to tuck a little picture uh, underneath, you can certainly do that as well. And I just used, again, coordinating colors to go on the inside of my gatefold thus saving me a little bit of extra designer paper. But of course, you know, I could have done the exact same thing. And in hindsight, I probably wish that I had for these two panels because they really aren't seen. I would have, if I were to do this again, I would do those two panels in a solid as well. And then just leave the designer paper to really shine. And so that is basically what the album looks like now. We are just about completed the album and it's now just a matter of adding some little uh, finishing touches. There are designer papers to go on the outside. I did put the same designer paper that was on the, the page. I put on the back and the front cover. And then the last thing to do is designer paper on the outside and a closure, which I believe is going to be like, um, something to wrap around and 
I'm going to have some magnets on the front and hopefully that will hold everything nice and neatly inside. So thank you again for joining me. Hopefully you are going to tackle this project and make it your own. And if you do, I really, really, really would appreciate a quick share on our Facebook page so that I can see what your project looks like and how you've made it your own. That would be absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much. Please don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe. Hit the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. And if you found this at all useful or helpful, please, 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 please give me a big old thumbs up. As far as the YouTube analytics go, that helps me more than I can say. So thank you so much again for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you're staying safe and well. Bye.